Hi guys, Bella Donna Black here, and here is five true scary stories from the subreddit Let's Never Meet. Number one. Believe me or not, that's up to you. I've read and watched these kinds of stories on the internet, and I was always convinced that the stories weren't true, that is, until it happened to me. I go to visit my dad recently and have had no trouble whatsoever. One time I started to hear weird noises in his house and sometimes some of my stuff had been moved. My cousin stares at my dad's house from time to time and he was at my dad's the same time I was so I thought the weird noises and my stuff being moved were him. I went to bed that night and felt like eyes were just watching me. I managed to drift off into sleep but I woke up around 2am and what I saw made me absolutely shit scared. There was a figure stood there and it just disappeared. I woke my cousin up and asked to swap rooms. He said fine and called me a baby. By 10 minutes later he came back into the room I was in and requested if he could sleep on the floor. I said fine since his face was pale white. Turns out that he saw the same figure I saw. We forgot about this experience but he recently brought this story up to me about a week ago. We decided to do some research. Turns out my dad's estate was built where a mental asylum. I came up with a theory that I think is true. Maybe it was a victim from the asylum. Number two. A little bit of info for you. I'm a small female. I'm only being about five foot two inches. This story took place when I was about ten. I didn't learn exactly what happened until about a year ago. My mum's first date was when she was about 15 with a guy named Jack. He ended up moving away a few months after they started dating and since it was the age before Facebook, they didn't stay in contact for very long. They went their separate ways and hadn't heard from each other until my mum joined Facebook when I was young. Apparently, a few days after she joined, he friended her. He struck up a conversation with her and was messaging her every day. He professed his love for her by having her full name middle name included tattooed on his calf. She reminded him that she was married to my dad. He turned violent. He started threatening her every day, non-stop. She ignored them and blocked every account he used to harass her. Until one day, he sent a photo from my neighbourhood. It was of my sister and I riding our bikes up and down our street. I didn't know why at the time, but my mum burst out of our front door, ordered my sister and I inside. Once we were out of sight, to try to photograph Jack's car and license plate. The photos started coming very regularly. Pictures of my family, my house, my pets, and a blurry photo of my dad taken through my bathroom window. My mum threatened him with the police and the threats started towards my sister and I. I saw screenshots later on. Threats to rape, murder, kidnap and sell me on the black market. My mum called the cops. I'm not sure what happened after that. My mum refused to see what happened to him. He died of a heart attack a few years ago and that's when my mum told me the story. Is the mum's creepy stalker? I'm glad we never fully met. Number three. Recently I have been thinking about the past. When I was a child I would go everywhere by myself. The town I lived in was tiny, 500 people. We all knew each other so my parents weren't bothered with me walking to and from the bus stop alone even in grade school. It was down a tiny dirt road across the street and through the high school football field. Five minutes max. So I was walking home one day and a car pulls up beside me. The guy in the car tells me my dad asked him to pick me up and drive me home. Now, keep in mind, this is a small town and people are friendly. Someone talking to a kid is not odd, but the fact that I was next to my driveway was very strange. Still, not being a suspicious person, I said no thanks. This is my house and kept going. I guess he was surprised because he didn't stop me. Thought nothing of it at the time, but now I'm so relieved. Creepy guy in the car? Probable kidnapper? Let's never meet again. Number four. Keep in mind that we are 14 year old girls and very girly, but one of us is skilled with gun and knives. And we're in the countryside. It was around midnight. The midnight munchies got to us. We walked out of the bedroom to walk down the stairs. The stairs gave a straight view of the door that has a glass window. 
Valentina has seen a guy walking on the porch. She pulled Christina into the room. Christina's hunting instincts kicked in. She put the computer chair in front of the door, locking it. A few moments later, the girls venture onto the landing, shutting off the lights. The guy was gone. It was a new weekend. Valentina and Christina was waiting for Violet to come over. When she arrived, they watched the movie. The TV cut to black. Nobody touched the remote. They brushed it off and Valentina fiddled with the wires. She sighed and went to sit back on the couch. Halfway in her walking, the TV came back on. It wasn't even raining that hard. The movie finished. They moved to the kitchen, jumped at every little sign. Christina even held a knife for a little bit. They lived. Creepy guy? Are people he scared the shit out of us? Let's never meet. Number five. When I have a gut feeling, I normally listen to it. I went roller skating one night with my kids when I fell and broke my wrist. I knew I'd broken it. Good, because of the curve it made. We had many hospitals to choose from. The closest one to me was the Red County, which was 10 minutes away. But I had a feeling to just drive the extra 15 minutes and go to the bigger hospital downtown so they could set it there. We get there when the owner of the skating rink called us to ask if we are okay. I have been shot. My husband asked, what are you talking about? What he said made me sick for many reasons. The police have taken an inmate to the hospital where he had stolen the guard's gun and was holding a nurse. My husband's cousin is a nurse and she was working that night. So I called her and this is what she told me. She said there was a big outburst. One officer was out of the room and one in. The man was able to get his gun and hold it to the nurse. There was no talking this guy down. And the other officer came in the room and shot him before he could do damage to others. I am so thankful I chose a different hospital that night. Because knowing my luck, I would have been put in the room beside him. And my kids would have been scared for life. I've not had what you call a normal life. But there are so many stories of creepiness that I can share. But later. Because some I will leave hard. a link of the new story in the description below. So that you can read more on this last story. Hey guys, thanks for watching and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the description below and subscribe to my channel.